What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast and Radio Show. Coming to you on the Sunday here, post-advanced Metcon session with our Q2 folks. Just finished up the last workout of our quarter two advanced Metcon series. And if I start coughing here in admittedly, you know why. Uh, because it's either the bike, the row, or the ski, or maybe the, the wall balls and the lunges. I don't know, but uh, I feel like I got hit by a bus. However, I have a busy week uh, of work and travel, so I want to get you on a real quick podcast um, to, to ride to as you kick off your Monday, or if you're listening to this on your drive to work, or Monday evening, hopefully it sparks something inside each one of you. And a side note before we kick off, I probably have five to ten packs of individual athletic greens, so if you're watching on YouTube, you guys, it's these little packets right here that I'm showing, I think I have maybe five to ten, so if you've never tried them and you're on the fence and you may be thinking about you know, getting on board or switching the current greens you're taking, shoot me a message as soon as possible because they are going to go very quickly, I would imagine... Uh, by the time I load this within the hour, I'll have about 50 requests. Um, just for the sake of, if you guys, I know it's an investment in money, but it's the one supplement that I take every single day. I do take other things um, through uh, most days, but when I travel, that's the one go-to I always have because it doesn't have to be refrigerated. It's easy. It's in a pack. You can rip it, stick it in water, boom, and I'm good. And admittedly, it's hard for me to eat four to five servings of greens when I'm at an airport or in a car or stuck at certain work events or functions or even family stuff, you know, when you're not in your own element and ecosystem. And so that ensures I get the micronutrients I need. I've noticed a huge increase in energy over time. I feel much healthier. And uh, it's just so simple. And it's the only greens that don't taste like shit. So uh, that's why I dig them. And so if you guys do like them, I'm happy to, you know, give you a free pack if I can. And then obviously, uh, you know, we have a link for, for 20 free travel packs with your first order, which is basically like a free month's worth. It's like a hundred bucks for free uh, in all reality. So it's a great deal. And again, I like the taste and, and I'll probably take it, you know, the rest of my life unless they come up with something that tastes way better, that tastes like, you know, you know, chocolate chip cookies. But uh, last I checked, you know, greens are green, so it is what it is. Anyways, uh, this podcast, I'm talking uh, all stuff I've talked about before. You know, I'm saying this is, you are what you consume. And uh, I can't believe I haven't done this on a podcast before. We have a mandatory minute. Uh, so if you're on our YouTube channel, you can check out the mandatory minute Cliff Notes version of this. And I thought I had a blog written on this, but apparently I never loaded it because I can't find it anywhere on Google or our site. And uh, I wrote this, I think, in 2015 or maybe 16. And it's just as true today uh, as then, even more so probably with the power of the internet and social and what we do. And so when I say, you know, you are what you consume, you guys have heard that before. Um, your, your mom, or your grandma probably told you, you know, you are what you eat. And I think truer words probably have never really been spoken. And if you think about it, you know, you are what you eat. Um, this is a 100% literal statement. Like what you eat, the food that you put in your mouth um, becomes part of you and your body at, at some stage and some point. A lot of it, again, if you burn it all off, cool. But odds are somewhere along the chain, some of those remnants are going to stick with you, literally. And let's say you eat cookies. And the cookie will eventually, down the digestive chain, become part of your body. It'll morph into your physical being. And it, once you understand like how food works, A, it's our, our fuel source and it powers us, but it also becomes us. Uh, understand like the food that we eat sticks with us inside and out, from our fat cells, um, obviously to our muscles, um, to our, our skin, our hair, and the nails grow. You go down the list, that is all created by the food that we put into our body. And I bring up the point, not to change your eating habits, although if this does spark a change in, in how you eat, I'll gladly take credit for your transformation. Uh, but I'm talking about, you know, consuming things on multiple levels. And before I dig into that, just understand that, and I've given the analogy before with with the, with the home, because people in, in America now, homes are selling like, like fucking crazy. The market is insane. I don't really understand how it can keep trending this way. And again, I'm not, I, I'm not a financial, I'm not an analyst. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen, but I just think from a realistic standpoint, how my home that I live in now has become so much more expensive uh, in like the six years I've been there. It really is mind blowing that how people can keep affording these things if they increase at scale. I'm, I'm interested to see how it happens. But the point of it is with the homes, because we in America value homes as <clears throat> kind of the American dream, which I have my own two cents on that. But if you're buying all your stuff at like Walmart, and that's how you're building your home, and that's what you're furnishing your home with, you're gonna have a Walmart house. Now, I'm not saying that's good or bad. And if you buy all your stuff at like Crate and Barrel, and you build it with Crate and Barrel stuff and fill it with Crate and Barrel stuff, you have a Crate and Barrel house. Now, again, I'm not judging anyone, but those are gonna be two different homes. Not only in terms of the style and how it looks and feels, but the quality and the construction of it. 
You guys make the choice what's better or worse. I'm just saying you have to understand it that way. And so your body, if you want to build this amazing, beautiful body that runs, it moves, it jumps, it skips, it's powerful, it looks fucking great, but you're feeding it a bunch of shit, how is it going to look and move and feel amazing? But if you feed it real, healthy, nutrient-dense foods, mostly plants and animals, it's probably, within macro ranges, it's probably going to look and move and feel a different way. So that's what I mean by we are, we consume. But on a deeper level, I'm talking about the consumption of everything we do. And think about it for a few seconds. What do you consume daily? If we go down the list, and I'm going to go deep here with you guys. The food you consume, the drinks you're consuming, whether that's water, coffee, tea, sodas, beer, wine, mixed drinks, milkshakes, you know, Jamba Juice, you name it. That's all part of who you are. The books you consume. What books are you reading? Are you reading audiobooks? Are you listening to podcasts? What podcasts are you listening to? What TV shows do you watch? Do you watch the news? What movies are you consuming? The conversations you're consuming with your wife, your husband, your kids, your friends, your family, your negative Aunt Carol, like your horrible Uncle John, like whatever it is, like those conversations become part of us as well. The products we are into, the clothes that we wear, the cars that we drive, the handbags that you ladies grab, like the gadgets we use, uh, the iPads, the phones, different things. You become a direct product of the things you consume on a daily basis. They shape not only our physical being, obviously by what we eat and drink, but they also shape us on various levels, mentally, emotionally, and oftentimes for people, even spiritually. Um, it becomes a materialistic thing. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll dig into it in a second. And in America, especially, I think I think this has always happened. I, I don't want to make social media the enemy because I do not believe it is. I don't think social media and money make us any different. It just exposes who we are. And, and it shows who we are for, for various reasons and on various levels. And in America, I think many people identify their personal identity in their consumption. They even find their perceived value or importance based on those material things. Now, I'm going to say that sentence again so you guys catch it. I think a lot of people find their personal identity in their consumption. So they're not worried about being producers in the world. They're worried about being consumers. And I know it sounds maybe kind of left and right, but, but hear me out here. We ask people uh, you know, in my fitness circle and my friends and the people like, are you a producer or a consumer? And we say it at our house too a lot, or we used to anyway. My wife is a gangster now, so we don't have the same conversations we had, you know, five, six, seven years ago. But I'm like, are you producing more than you're consuming? Like from a financial standpoint, are you making more money every month than you're spending? If you are, you're a producer in this house. If not, you're a consumer. So if you're making 10 grand a month, but you're spending 12 grand a month, you are a consumer. If you're making four grand a month and you're only spending two grand a month, now you're a producer, if you guys are following me here. So I do think a lot of people identify their personal self with their consumption and they even do find their value in that same consumption of A, the clothes they wear, the cars that they drive, and the homes that they buy and live in. And a large chunk of Americans even place judgment, which a lot of people do, and if you're hearing this, and you do that, I would urge you to stop, <clears throat> excuse me, if you can. But a lot of people have grown up in this ecosystem where we judge people based on the neighborhood they live in. We judge people based on, you know, the car that they drive and the clothes that they wear. And, and somehow we, we make that mean they're either successful or unsuccessful, which I believe is completely fucking ridiculous. But it's, it's the game that a lot of people play and they live in. And so a lot of people do place judgment and importance and measure success by the amount of consumption one can make and have. But meaning if I have more, bigger, newer, better, that I'm somehow better or more successful than you, which I, again, I believe is complete horseshit. But we, we make these assumptions and we make these judgments based on things like the size of the home or the zip code of the home or the, you know, the neighborhood of the home or the luxury brand of the car. Or when you get into the really affluent stuff, what series is it? Is it a three series, a five series, is it a seven series? You know, is it an E classic? Is it an AMG? You know, we get really detailed into these things. Uh, and then it's designer clothes. And then we start equating these things like the bag and the shoes and, and the glasses and the watch to being successful. And right or wrong, that's what many people do every single day. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at the internet and the people you work with and the things people are doing and the choices they're making. 
And <clears throat> the bigger question is, why are we consuming and making those choices? If you're doing it just for yourselves, I'm all for it. I'm not against stuff, you guys. If you ever see me pull up here in a nice truck or a different car, it means two things. One, my car completely died on the side of the road and I needed something new. And two, I did it for me. And I did it because I wanted to do it because it would make me happy intrinsically and for nobody else because I don't give a shit. Because I know at this point I'll never buy anything nice enough to impress anybody, especially where I live. Uh, unless I pull up in like a Ferrari or a Lambo, it really doesn't stick out here. So who gives a shit? And I sure as hell don't anyway. And so the reason I bring up the car stuff is because it's the easiest comparison. I think a lot of people drive vehicles, which again is a depreciating asset. It's a, it's a motor with wheels on it. It goes down in value the, every second you have it and the more you drive it. The few rare occasions of collector items, but most of us aren't into that. So knowing a car is a depreciating asset, we're buying it. Because do we really love it? Like when people are driving a BMW and a Mercedes, for example, which are they're, they're great vehicles, are you driving it because you love it so much? Like you love the history of BMW? You love the history of Mercedes? Like you love the manufacturing? You love how it drives? Like you, you really notice the difference between your Mercedes and your Toyota? Like do you, I, I'm not judging you, I'm just asking like, do you really understand the difference? Or are you doing it because the car gives a perception of you to somebody else? That people stop at a stoplight and they see you and they say, oh, they drive a Mercedes. They must do well financially. They must be successful. They must have a good career or a good job or they must be X, Y, Z. Or is it because you want to impress your friends and family and parents or somebody else? I don't know. Only you guys can answer that question. But that's what I'm driving at is we are what we consume. And sometimes we're consuming things. We don't even know why we're doing it. Or what I believe is we're doing it for the wrong reasons. Now, if you do it to impress people and it, and it makes you happy... I, I'm not. I'm nobody to judge you in your life, but if you're doing it to impress people, and you still have to work a job you hate and do a bunch of shit that stresses you out to impress people who really don't give a fuck about it anyway, I think you're making a mistake in your consumption process. Just my two cents for everybody out there. And in today's world, I think a lot of people are finding their identity in things that are not really who they are. Like you are not your job title. You are so much more than that. Like, yeah, I remember AC used to call me Jeremy Scott Fitness like it was my fucking name. And my name is just Jeremy. Like, I'm not Jeremy Scott Fitness. That is the company and, and company, you know, tributaries that we run here. But that's not who I am. I, I'm a lot more than just that. I might be a person who loves fitness, but I'm not Jeremy Scott Fitness. And I'm not, if my, if my job title is author or business owner or personal trainer or coach or, you know, podcast or whatever you choose to call it. Like, I'm a lot more than that, and so are all of you listening to this. But a lot of people start to find their identity in the job title, in the car they drive, in the zip code they live in, in the clothes they wear, in the amount of money they make and they can buy. And I understand this. The amount of money you make is part of who you are. Um, if you work hard for it, you are financially, you know, successful. And I, and I understand that, but we can't let those things become the self-identifier in us. And I think it's... How we're living today is probably in strong contrast to how you like your great great grandparents lived. And I could be wrong, um, but I don't think it was exactly the same. And and I I think we've always done stuff as humans um, to impress other people or to keep up with the fucking Joneses and all the stupid shit. And I think the internet just exposes it and brings it to a, a bigger level than it's ever been before. Because if it was you know thirty five years ago, you know. You know, Johnny probably bought a Mustang to impress people in the neighborhood, but you probably had to drive by Johnny's house or he had to drive by your house to see it. Now people post it every single day on the internet with the quote unquote blessed bullshit next to it. So the point of me getting on that little rant is we choose to consume the things in our life. And so if you're constantly consuming junk food, you'll probably be overweight, unhealthy, and probably have a body that you don't want. It, it's just a game. If you're constantly drinking alcohol, you know, three, four, five times a week, multiple drinks, and you're in a calorie surplus, you're probably going to get fat. And over time, you're not going to have a body you're really happy with. It's not that complex to understand. If you're constantly watching the news and reading all the horror stories and all the negative things going on in the world, you're most likely to become a negative, depressed, and paranoid person in the future. Uh, I've seen it happen for a lot of people. That's why I don't watch the news as a side note, because I don't really give a shit. So I'm just going to work really hard and be awesome and fill my head with positive stuff and that's how my life's going to roll. And if you guys are always out there consuming negative conversations with your circle of friends and coworkers, um, 
odds are you're going to be a glass half empty person before too long because that shit's like a cancer, man. It seeps into your body and it fucking spreads and it changes the way you think about things. And you might've been parented that way or grew up in an ecosystem where it was negative and they told you the world was against you and you were a dipshit and you were a loser, but just know that stuff's fake as well. And somebody planted that shit in your fucking head. Nobody hates themselves and hates their lives naturally. Um, it just comes from all the other horse shit and the outside things that we let seep into our brain. But you have to be confident in who you are. And uh, you know you have to get rid of the negative shit in your life. You have to stop consuming all the negative nonsense. And on the flip side, if you're always consuming real, whole nutrient-dense foods inside your macro ranges, you're probably going to be a healthy, happy, fit, strong person uh, sooner than later. If you fill your mind by consuming positive, enriching educational books and shows, your outlook on life, you guys, will probably be pretty amazing, and your future is probably pretty bright. If you consume and engage in positive communications, and you have good conversations and laughs, and you have fun with a circle of people who are like-minded and have goals similar to yours, odds are you're going to reap the positive benefits of those conversations, not just today, but weeks and months and even years down the road. At the end of the day... We're all a product of what we choose to consume, you know, from the shoes on our feet, the cars we drive, to the, the product we put in our hair, and the food that we, we have in our body to the house that we live in. Um, we become a product of our overall environment, and that environment we choose to put ourselves in. And when I say this, and I've said it before, you can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. And you maybe can't change if the people around you only value materialistic things and they want to keep up with the Joneses and impress people and they're worried about judgment or if they're negative as fuck and they think the world's against them and that, you know, America, the dream is dead and things are terrible and the, the economy is going to crash and the world's going to melt and all these horrible things. You can't change those people, but you can change the people around you, meaning you can insert yourself into a different ecosystem and a different group of people and if you do that long enough, it will erase any of that old negative shit and it will put you in a different, powerful mindset. And I think a lot of times that's people's problems. And the hard part is not probably where you work because you can always quit and get a different job. If As long as you're okay with either making less money or doing something different, that's a pretty easy fix. The hard one for a lot of you is that negative person can be your husband. It can be your wife. It can be your grandma, your grandpa, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, it can be your friend, quote unquote friends. And that might be harder for some of you to detach from and dictate from. And what I do in those situations is this. I'm not telling you to cut people out of your life, but you can't consume all the same shit they consume because you're going to become the same negative horseshit version of them. What I do in those situations is I, I, I create boundaries from those people. And I, I only hang out with them in certain situations. I only call them in certain scenarios. And I consume them on a level that's very surface. Not not much deeper than that. And I have conversations with them that I know are going to prompt more positive engagement. I'm not going to bring up things from the past. I'm not going to bring up things that they're going to dwell on about the future. I'm not going to bring up things that I know it's going to trigger them and set them off. And so they become like a surface level friend is what I call them. And they're not really a deep level friend. And that's okay too. And if that person happens to be your dad or happens to be your uncle or your mom or your brother or sister, then so be it. Um, and I can promise you it's tough at first, but you'd be way better off for it. Um, so if you're looking at your life and you're not where you want to be for whatever reason, you have to take a closer look and you have to really ask yourself, what type of books am I really reading? What type of podcast am I really listening to? What types of TV am I really watching? You know, is it, I guess I'll go the same road. What am I consuming on social media? Am I following people who post positive shit? That's going to help me out and motivate me and inspire me and make me a better person or make me laugh or entertain me and something that brings me joy. Or am I following people who I compare myself to and people who are negative and are posting ridiculous shit that causes me to feel a certain way about myself or about my future, about my life and about my choices. And if you're doing the latter, stop. You don't have to get I tell people to tell them and they comment on my stuff. And they're like, Jeremy, you're full of shit and your podcast sucks and your body looks like shit and you do this exercise wrong, whatever. I'm like, you don't have to listen to my stuff, dick. Like you don't have to follow me at all. You don't even have to you don't even have to know I exist on this planet, but you're choosing to watch my life. And so for you guys out there, and I know it might be your friends, you can follow them, but quote unquote not really follow them. If you get my drift. Like, or you can just unfollow them altogether. You can choose to not look at their stuff or scroll through it super fast. I mean, whatever you need to do to get out of that ecosystem, stop consuming things that are putting you in a bad mood, that are making you sad, depressed, and fucked up. It's not worth it. 
We have so many options nowadays. We have almost like so when you watch Netflix, right? My wife and I'm like, what do you want to watch? I'm like, we rarely watch TV anyway. And so we do it like, I want to make it good, right? And I'm like, what do you want to watch? I'm like, I don't know. There's like 8 trillion shows. Why am I going to watch something that's going to put me in a bad mood and make me feel shitty and bad and depressed? I'm not about that. I try to fill my head with only the most positive, motivating, awesome things. Because you know why? All that negative, horrible shit, I'm going to see it anyway. Life's going to happen. It's going to kick me in the fucking teeth. And I'm going to see some horrible shit. And I'm going to experience some more awful stuff in my life. And that's going to come. So why am I going to choose to do that on my own? It's just not worth it. So ask yourself, what am I watching? What am I listening to? Whose life am I following and looking at? Is it people I aspire to be like or what want to hang around and seem fun? Or is it these negative assholes who are dragging me down? And again, on the same note, what type of friends do you have? Are they friends that lift you up and fan your flame or friends that piss on your fire and drag you down and tell you things aren't possible and they literally look at the 19 negative things down the road and not the 78 positive things they have right in front of their face? And what are most of your conversations about with your mom, with your dad, with your brother and your sister and your friends and family? Is it just a bitch and complain session? Or is it positivity and reminiscing and talking about the current state of how amazing your life is or the future, what it could bring you? What types of foods are you eating every single day if you're not fit? What kind of drinks are you consuming? How often are you drinking alcohol? How often are you eating processed shit and sugar? How are your sleeping habits? How are your stress habits? How are your training habits? You control all these things. And you have control over every single day of your life. Nobody else does. I don't care what you say. You're a grown adult. You're listening to this. You control your life. Nobody else. Nobody's making you work somewhere. Nobody's making you earn a certain income. Nobody's making you live in that neighborhood or live in that house or drive that car. You're a grown-ass adult. All these decisions are yours. And when you take extreme accountability for yourself, life gets pretty fucking good, man. When you understand that all of your successes are yours and all of your failures are yours, there's nowhere to hide. And so ask yourself, am I in control of my life? The answer, yes. And it comes down to what you eat, what you drink, what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, who you talk to, what you choose to buy, what you choose to place value on. And that's probably the biggest thing. What you're choosing to place value on every single day of your life. And it really, you don't have to look very hard to see what people put value on. You just peek behind the curtain real quick and you look, man. How does that person spend their time? How does that person spend their money? And those are the things you value most. The things that you're spending your time doing and spending your money on, because we spend our time earning money, most of us, that's what we do. And so, do they spend their time doing these things? And do they spend their money doing these things? Because that is what their value is. And one of the biggest talks I do to people in fitness and even outside of fitness, I do like a pie chart and we show them this and I have them list. What are the five things you spend your time doing the most every single day? Whether that's work or commuting or fitness or playing with your kids or health or whatever it is. And then I say, what are the five things you spend, or excuse me, what are the five things you value most? And typically the five things they spend their time doing and the five things they value most do not match up whatsoever. And so I'm asking if you find yourself in this huge, you know, kind of fucked up state of like, well, I value this, but I spend my time doing this and I'm consuming this, but I really wanna be this. You have to ask yourself, maybe I need to reevaluate my life and start consuming different things. Because we become what we consume. And you and only you have the power to change that. So if you need to make a change, I would ask you guys to take the first step today. Step back from your life. We get so busy and we're so wrapped up with emails and phone calls and work deadlines and it's the end of the quarter and we do blah, 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 you name it. It's never gonna, again, you'll never have more time in your life than you do right now. It's never gonna get any less stressful. It's never gonna get any easier or faster. You're only gonna get older and more inundated and more stressed out if you choose to be that way. So. If you find yourself getting so busy working in your life, that this is your chance when you get off this podcast, stop it, to work on your life and ask yourself, am I consuming the right foods? Am I consuming the right drinks? Am I consuming the right advice on my finances? Am I consuming you know, the right conversations and the right people and the right podcasts and the TV shows and the right education? Am I listening to the right stuff every single day to make me a positive, awesome, inspired, motivated, productive member of society? Or am I just going to be a negative shithead consumer for the rest of my life and consume all the wrong negative stuff. Only you can answer that. And I tie all this into, 
you know, your job and to, to family and to fitness and to finance and the food we eat because it's, it's really that binary. It's not black and white. It's, it's really that simple because I, I again, you guys, every podcast I ever do, every conversation I have with people, it comes from either a, my own fucked up life that I once had that I'm, I, again, I'm a work in progress. We all are. We're all a little bit crazy, but I used to be a certain person and my, my wife, I'll bring her on. She can attest to this. Uh, I, I'm like, I, I'm always, I'm always the same person at the core, but the skills I've learned and the people I've got to hang out with have, have changed the way that I've looked at my life. And so from the friends I have now, and I still, I'm all homies with the guys I grew up with. I love them. Um, but the circle changes, the circle levels up on a lot of levels and the people you hang out with in terms of what they value, the things that they say, the way they treat people, how giving they are, how kind they are, how fucking hard they work. You know, the foods that they eat, the things that they drink, the things that they surround themselves with, the books that they read. You start putting yourself in those positive situations. Even if you're the worst person in the group, it's going to level you up instantly. It's going to change what you do. So if you find your life is not where you want it to be in any area, look at what you're consuming. Not just on the macro level, the big picture, but dig down to the little stuff. What am I doing on the smallest level of consumption? Then go to the macro. And see if you can't make one or two swaps and changes. Because I promise you, if you do, it can change everything. Because at the end of the day, you guys can consume the life you want. The problem is most people are consuming all the wrong shit. And they're consuming a life that they don't want. And they're worried about all the wrong things. And they're identifying their life with just status and just material stuff. And just things that aren't really making them happy and bringing them value. And at the end of the day, there is nothing else, you guys, other than being happy as fuck. Because life is so short. We're all going to be dead and probably, depending on how old you are, if you're listening to this, I'd guess in 80 years, we're all going to be dead. We won't be on this earth. We'll be just a fucking memory, hopefully, a lot of us. And that we sat and worried about the opinions of others or the 89 negative things that could happen or the emblem on our car or if our body fat was this versus this. Like, There's all these little things that we make so critical and so insane and it's robbing joy from us. It's robbing us of certain things. And all you have to do is consume things that are going to make you happy today, make your life better today, and a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, and five years from now. And just do the right things. Because I promise you this, negative stuff's going to happen. Shitty things are going to infiltrate your life, even if you try to be positive, amazing, and you know inspired every day. So why choose to, on your own, put yourself in a comparison game with other people? Why choose to... Follow things that are going to be negative and drag you down and fill your life full of things that don't need to be there. Just my two cents. So I can't believe we have not done this podcast before. If you guys have heard me, and again, I probably said something similar 8,000 times, but uh, it's really weird that I've never done this You Are What You Consume podcast before. Uh, I'm glad I found it in all reality. I'm, I'll throw it on the blog too so you guys can read through it. It'll come up in the email probably in the next uh, week and a half in our newsletter. Again, if you guys are not in our newsletter, um, shoot me a message. I'm happy to add you there. We send out three emails per week minimum. I've done that for the last 10 years, which is insane to say. Um, I never miss uh, the three email tier. Sometimes it's five emails, but always three for sure. And uh, if you're on iTunes right now or you have an iPhone, an iPad, or a MacBook, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Open up the iTunes app. Write Jeremy Scott Fitness in there. Drop us a five star. Leave a comment. I truly would appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, share this podcast with your friends and family. That's the only payback I really ask for you guys. If I, if I have provided any value in your life at all, being these you know rants about my opinion on life, and again, I'm an expert on my opinion, um, or if it's on fitness or nutrition or lifestyle, or you, you've watched one of my workouts and, and you've used it and you enjoyed it, or you learned one tip from me about anything at all, drop me the five star, leave the comment, and share this with somebody else. That's the only payment I ever need from you guys. I'm not asking you to ever buy my shit. Um, you don't have to buy any t-shirts or coaching programs or books or uh, anything else we ever sell, but just share it and pass along because it's, it's a powerful thing when people hear things that can empower them and, and make them stop living a shit life when they don't have to and let them know that they really have the choices. And, and it's all things we know and have heard before, but if they hear my voice and, and maybe for some reason in some weird alternate reality like I resonate with them you know deeper than somebody else has I'm happy that and you guys understand the casket effect you guys have by sharing positive information with people and if even if you want to share my words if you say it to them in your own way and you become the voice for them that works all the same so anything else you guys want to hear in the podcast shoot me a message hit me up let me know I'm going to try to 
do the detailed nutrition Q&A podcast, which you guys have asked for. I got about 150 questions. Uh, there's no way I can fit all those. Some of them are crazy anyway. Uh, I can't fit all those into the next episode, but I will do a one on that. If I don't do it early this week, I'm going to try to do it this weekend when I'm traveling, and I will get that to you guys. I have a bunch of other guests coming on too, a lot of cool people um, with some really great stories. But if there's anything else you guys want to hear specifically, you always know you can shoot me a DM or send me an email. I'm happy to record it if I can speak on it. Um, and until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people, and please just keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. And remember, you guys, you are what you consume, and you can, can truly, you can consume the life you want. The choice is yours. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.